Coastal Conservation Association of Louisiana is the state's largest conservation group. It's a nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving and enhancing the marine resources for future generations. We're out here today at Sippermore Point on our latest project, an artificial reef out in Vermilion Bay. Our bays and lakes in Louisiana are all soft bottom and they depend on oyster reefs and other hard substrate for the marine organisms to attach to. So we're recreating this with these artificial reefs, creating new habitat out here today, recycling materials and using them in an environmentally sound way. Tell us what role does the artificial reef play in uh, the e ecosystem of this area? The artificial reef provides an attachment point for the marine organisms. The benthic organism, both plants and animals, have to have a hard attachment point. And in our soft water bottoms, we have to provide this for them. Our natural oyster reefs are declining as our salinity increases and coastal erosion takes place. So we're supplementing this with these artificial reefs to help our ecosystem, to give us fishing destinations, and, and to aid in our fisheries. How do the fish respond? The fish respond almost immediately because we're changing the bottom topography, which, which causes a different current. It causes some eddies and flows. It'll, it'll concentrate the bait fish over the top of the reef. And once it becomes colonized with the marine organisms, it'll provide a home for the bait. Then the bait will, will congregate there and it'll provide forage for our, our game fish species, our speckled trout and redfish. Tell us about the engineering feat that's involved in building this reef. These projects are about a, a two-year effort. It starts with site selection, which our local CCA chapters are involved in because they know these waters better than anyone. Then we get our state wildlife and fisheries agents involved in it because they're also very familiar with the biology of these areas. Then we have to start with permitting on the federal level and state level. You know, there's several agencies that regulate what you do on these waters. So we have to go through all those permitting steps, make sure everything's approved, make sure the materials are approved, the location's approved. That we're not going to cause a hazard to navigation or any of the other users of the water body. Then once all of that's completed, we, we look for materials. In our, our program now, we're looking for materials of opportunity, anything that's roads, bridges, and in this case, the oldest sugar mill in Louisiana, the Adeline Plantation Sugar Mill, was dismantled in 1921, but the foundation was left behind. So the brick and concrete from this foundation are being crushed and made into a suitable material for our reef building today. And uh, how many pounds are we talking about? What will be the size of the reef when it's finished? This reef will be a 10,000 ton project and it's going to cover eight acres out here in Vermilion Bay. So it's going to be a large reef. We're going to mark it with mooring buoys so the anglers can find it and tie up next to it and so that the shrimpers and other people can avoid it. So it'll be very visible from the surface with these buoys, but it'll be a very important underwater feature for the fisheries habitat. Well, we are the Coastal Conservation Association. Uh, we here in Louisiana are the Coastal Conservation Association of Louisiana. We're proud to uh, represent more than 17,000 re uh, recreational anglers and conservationists across Louisiana. Uh, today we're out here in beautiful Sippermore Point uh, on, ver on the shorelines of Vermilion Bay, as you can see behind me. Uh, we're getting ready to build the Audemars Reef, uh, the Leon and David Audemars Reef, in honor of uh, two members of the Audemars family who were tragically lost a couple of years ago go uh, in a boating accident, but today we're, we're going to uh, make a long-lasting legacy for, for them and their family by creating some great fish habitat out of, uh, uh, out of recycled material and uh, reef right off the shorelines of the, of the bay right out here. How did this project come about? Uh, this was the brainchild of our four local CCA chapters. That is the Lafayette chapter called the Acadiana chapter. That is the Abbeville chapter called the Vermilion chapter. The New Iberia chapter, which is called the Sugar chapter. And the Crowley chapter, which is called Cajun. Uh, those guys uh, and gals got together uh, through our habitat committee process. Uh, proposed this idea a couple years ago. Uh, we went through the processes of getting permitted and finding the right sites and working with the materials company and the deployment contractor uh, and we find ourselves here today and it's a great day. What's involved in building this in terms of uh, uh, the amount of uh, material and the cost that's involved in the timetable? Yeah, today's going to be about a half a million dollar project, give or take. Uh, we're going to take about 10,000 tons of recycled rock material. And, and interesting about this project, the material is coming from the historic Abilene Sugar Factory from right here in this part of the state. Uh, they had some material that they had uh, that they weren't using anymore. It was broken down from the old uh, the old facility. Uh, so we're able to sort of give the 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 facility new life. 
uh, with this reef. Uh, the, it's about 10,000 tons of material to be broken down into about softball size pieces uh, and shoveled off of the barges, as you might be able to see behind me, uh, into the water over about an eight acre area and uh, create some wonderful fish habitat and a big brand new reef for, uh, for our friends here in Vermilion Bay. How long does it take to, to build an artificial reef of this kind? If the weather cooperates, it should take anywhere from 10 to 14 days. You know, if it's a little rough out there, it may take longer. Uh, but 10 to 14 days, uh, and they work pretty much 24-7, uh, uh, loading at night and uh, unloading the material into the water during the day. Tell us a little bit about the artificial reef program the CCA has. How many of these do you have, and uh, where are they? Well, we've got an incredibly vibrant artificial reef program uh, through CCA in partnership with our friends from Shell and our Building Conservation Trust through CCA's national office. Uh, we've done uh, now a dozen of these projects in partnership uh, with the Wildlife and Fisheries Department here in Louisiana. Uh, we take matching dollars from the state and the Artificial Reef Trust Fund and we match it with CCA dollars and dollars from our Shell Building Conservation Trust uh, and we combine those dollars to build projects like this. As I mentioned, this one here today uh, will end up costing about a half million dollars, uh, but we're building a, a bigger reef than we ever could for that kind of money because of the use of the recycled material, because of our friends from Shell and, and the, the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries monies as well. What are the long-term benefits of these reefs? Uh, well, there's really uh, many, but the main two are uh, creation of great fish habitat. Fishermen and their families will be able to go right out here to this reef uh, and catch fish for generations to come. Uh, secondly, uh, we found that our reefs have a really great wave attenuation uh, quality to them. So the shorelines right here uh, near the Quintana State Park are going to be more protected from waves coming in from the Gulf than they would have been before. This, this reef will have about a foot of relief off the bottom of the, uh, the seafloor out there. So waves coming in will be broken down some by that, by that elevation. The fishing area we're talking about is uh, Vermilion Bay, specifically uh, around the Cove and uh, the Blue Point area. It's a fishing area that is good all year long. It's, it's excellent in the months of September, October, November, and December. Uh, mostly speckled trout, some redfish, some flounder. And uh, most of the people that fish here are from Lafayette, New Iberia, Abbeville, and all the other little places around those areas. Just how popular is uh, the sport of fishing in this area? Oh, it's, it's extremely popular. It's, uh, it's a cultural thing. It's a pastime that, that families do from generation to generation. And, um, you know, when the fish are biting or even when they're not biting, there'll be hundreds of you know, boats out here fishing. We are extremely excited. Uh, sometimes you hear about these things and when they actually come to light like they are right now, it is, it is exciting. Everybody I've talked to just is, is ecstatic over it and really excited that, that we're fortunate enough to get a reef like that over here. This, uh, this area is uh, very, very old. Um, there's a lot of uh, history, fishing history here. Uh, a lot of old families here fish here. And uh, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's a great place to take my family out as well. This is going to mean a lot, especially for our kayak fishermen. Our kayak guys are going to have easy access to this reef. And it's, it's going to be a, a, a really good thing for those kayakers. And that's what we're excited about. It's, it's thrilling to see something come to fruition after you put so much effort into uh, producing something for the future generations. And that's what it's all about. Uh, taking traditions that are being passed down from, from generation to generation and making certain that the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, recreational side of the, of the uh, 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 sport is, is kept for the, for the generations that are to come. We are supplying uh, the material that's going to be used for the artificial reef. And uh, this is some material that was uh, uh, removed from the old Adeline uh, sugar mill. And, uh, uh, we've processed it and we bring it. We are bringing it over to a bear shell in Baldwin and then loading it on barges so it's deployed out to the area where the reef is going to be built. This is our second project that uh, we've done with CCA and Wildlife and Fishery. We uh, supplied the material over in uh, Big Lake uh, last year and uh, we're excited to be a part of it and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's for a good cause. So. 
I'm honored to uh, serve all these members here today, as well as 17,000 around uh, the state of Louisiana and about 100,000 around the United States. So uh, we welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. It's a special day here on the shores of Vermilion Bay. Uh, we are here today to begin construction and dedicate the new uh, Leon and David Artemal Reef, which if you look behind us in the distance, you could see being built um, right down the canal here. So it's a special day. There was a lot of folks that came together, together to make today uh, come to fruition. Uh, started with uh, our CCA volunteers from around the Acadiana area, uh, from our Acadiana chapter, our Sugar chapter, our Vermilion chapter, and our Cajun chapter, who came up with this idea for a reef in Vermilion Bay a couple of years ago. Uh, then led to us meeting our good new friends from the Artemal family uh, who have worked with us together and today we are so pleased uh, to honor uh, their father and their brother uh, who were lost a couple years ago uh, by honoring them with this wonderful new reef right here off the shorelines of, uh, of Vermilion Bay. We have many, many wonderful partners who make today possible. Uh, again, starting with our local chapters who make it possible. Again, we have representatives from our four local chapters to my left, uh, our Sugar chapter, our Acadiana chapter, our Vermilion chapter, and our Cajun chapter. Uh, their leadership are all out here with us today helping out, and they really were the ones that came up with the, the idea to do this. Uh, but other partners include uh, our wonderful friends at Shell Oil, who through a, a generous donation to the CCA Building Conservation Trust, uh, have funded the last five or six of these reefs that we have now built. Uh, we also have to recognize uh, our wonderful friends at the De Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries through their Artificial Reef Trust Fund. Half the funding for today's reef comes uh, from the state of Louisiana and the Artificial Reef Trust Fund. So we're so appreciative to them, not only for the funding, but also for the help in permitting this site, marking the site, and doing all the uh, behind the scenes work that it takes to, uh, to build a reef here in Louisiana. Uh, John Walter also mentioned our great friend Mr. John Fell from Road Rock Recycling who is here to uh, to my right. Uh, this is now the second project we've worked on with Mr. Fell. They've both been great successes uh, and we know this one will be uh, much the same. And then as I mentioned earlier our, our newest friend and partner uh, in our reef building uh, projects are the wonderful Artemoff family. I think as most uh, of you know uh, we lost two great members of the Artemoff family two years ago I believe it was uh, right here near the shores of Vermilion Bay in a boating accident, Mr. Leon, who's the patriarch of the family, and then uh, their son and brother, uh, David, who uh, was on the boat with Mr. Leon. We're so glad today to be able to honor this wonderful family, part of the Vermilion Bay community, uh, the Artemoff family, uh, through today's project. Uh, here to say a word or two about uh, the family and their thoughts about today's reef is uh, Leon's son, da uh, David's brother, Mr. Lance Artemoff. Lance. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> when CCA contacted us about uh, getting involved in this project, um, you know, Vermilion Bay, Bay is special to us, and uh, we decided to jump at the opportunity just because our family has, has grown up boating here, and, and our love for boats and water came from Sycamore Point and Vermilion Bay. So the fact that we could be involved in the project and my company can actually build it and then name it after my dad and brother is just fitting. Uh, it feels good and uh, it's a special day. So I want to thank everybody for letting us get involved in this and, uh, and naming it and having their legacy live on. And hopefully, it'll, you know, future generations can, uh, can enjoy the reef and fish and their love for boating just like, uh, just like we did. We're out in Vermilion Bay. We're at the work site here for this uh, Ordemar Reef that we're putting in today. This is a barge load of material of crushed brick and concrete that we're deploying, putting it on the, on the bottom of the bay here create that hard structure habitat for the marine organisms. What goes through your mind as you take a look at all this material and the crane in operation? Wow, this is just a big project here. We're going to move 10,000 tons of material out here. We're going to cover eight acres. This is going to be a huge fishing site for the anglers around here and a great benefit for the ecosystem of Vermilion Bay. It's just amazing to finally see this all come together, you know, from the dock, from the planning, from the months of talking about this, seeing the drones on paper, and then now seeing this actually uh, seeing rock in the water and the reef being built. It's a good feeling and uh, it just, uh, words can't describe it right now, but it, it feels good and I'm just so, again, so glad to be a part of, uh, of this project. If people have questions like more information, what should they do? 
Uh, very simple. Call us at the CCA Louisiana office. It's 225-952-9200. Uh, they can always go to our website at ccalouisiana.com. Very soon after the project is completed, we'll have the official coordinates for this, uh, for this new reef on the site. So go visit it, ask us any questions you like, and, uh, and we look forward to hearing from you.